Me and Gary V up in the office. Do rap flapping, walking through corporate. Talks about ownership and leverage. 1800 checks and shout out the beverage. So I think you need like, I do think that. I think we need everyone to have very laser fire. <gasps> but um, if it were, I would I'm easily. Cramping. You know, when there's a function, um, it's uh, that I like a lot. That I like a lot. All right, thank you. Good start. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are good you? See you? I'm Kelsey. Kelsey, real pleasure. I'll be right with no you. No worries. Just need a few minutes. I finally feel like I'm truly in the right place and time where I should be professionally, and like this is where I want to be, and I truly feel at home at this company. Like literally, you're gonna send me an email. I'm gonna ask you to send me an email, which I'm gonna use as my to-do list. And it's literally going to be, you know, I'm literally gonna go get all your feedback. Like, speak to Claude, speak to Steve, speak to Jason, and see if there's something I can help you with. Okay, that would be amazing. Seriously. Awesome. Ugh. Sore? I'm not sore. I'm cramping in the middle of my back, which is not allowing me to. Function. Would love to uh, just get us all aligned on what our strategy is, um, and uh, and see what we can get done. So, what has happened since we last met? It's a complicated business, and the feelings come and go. I apologize. One minute. This is to give you an update on. Uh, the team also to kind of like start having a high level discussion on um, just like going the industry, forward. The state of the union. Yeah, what do we want to be doing? In parallel, it is an industry that is going to be massive and will continue. Nothing's changed from my level of my belief and you know, it's interesting. I was in uh, Hong Kong. They're called KOLs. They're key opinion leaders. The KOL market in China and Asia is out of control. Be it's their number one media thing. They don't even buy media. Like because, because the platforms own everything. And because everything is tip based. So like, like all the key influencers are getting like tips in, while they live chat. Like I really want you deeply focused on this because I know it's gonna happen. That I know I'm right about. In the same way that I knew I was right about social media ads, I believe that Vayner Media wins two obnoxious media AORs on the back of our disproportionate truth that we understand influencer marketing better than and I believe that we can make the market fully believe that in 2022 and that's smart. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. How are you? Great to meet you. Such a pleasure. I'll yeah. be right with you. The way to really win is to have a pillar, right? Mm -hmm. Book is a pillar, right. but it's a historic pillar. Mm -hmm. To me, a new age pillar is either a vlog okay. or a podcast and you should have one or the other. Okay. Period. Like to me, ironically, actually it's the first time I'm saying this, to me ironically, if you do not have a vlog or a podcast right now, you're just leaving an enormous amount of opportunity. Uh, to me, you know, I guess I'm hedging, but like to me it's, you become vulnerable to not being, to not being relevant. Like you need to have both of them, one of them, um, or you need to be an actual celebrity. Like sure, to me, sure. it's the only thing that equals having a television show sure. or being an actor or actress or like, it's a pillar. My spoken word kind of stuff has really been the one thing that these kids, no matter where I go, like freak out over. So a lot of people have been telling me to just do a lot of videos for that, post it on Instagram, YouTube and all of that. And again, with the quality, like I'm just, you know, I'm worried. That's, that's why you're struggling. Okay. You've, you've put quality, sub, your personal subjective yeah. quality mm -hmm. on a pedestal. It is such a cliche reason people struggle. Okay. You're um, gonna have to jump into the pool yeah. and just see what happens. In the same way at a macro level, writing yeah. the book itself, yeah. you've gotta basically do the same thing with social. Okay. There's no piece of content yeah. with bad enough lighting, with, with bad enough quality, with like there's no piece of content that's gonna take you down. Great. Such a pleasure, yeah. have a great day. Thank you, can I take a picture? Sure, of course. Hi. Hi. I feel like there's a lot of exciting things happening now and I feel like I wanna make sure that I'm being smart about 
short term helping the company, long term working towards my goal. Good for you. You know, I'm turning 30 in a week and a half. And that like just, you know, sparks a lot of thoughts and feelings. 100%. I'm so acutely aware that the next couple of years can make a huge difference. Yeah, that's probably right. How I use my time and what I do in this time. I would tell you a couple of things as somebody who's 41. That is right and shockingly always right. Yeah. Like there are so many people that are 57 years old right now have misplayed it in their own mind and other people's minds for the last, you know, 37 years and legitimately can make a decision tomorrow that makes the next 30 years of their life so fruitful Mm -hmm. that it covers the warts of the prior 40. I genuinely know that to be true. So, you're right, but I think it's imperative that you don't cripple yourself, that there's this magical 36 month window between 30 and 33, that if you play it right, you go on to have this incredible life, and if you don't, you have a fraction of it. There's absolute truth to that. There's also equal non-truth to it, if you decide to make a decision at 33. Instead of tripling down on the right career decisions, I would argue that one of the best things you can do for you to really win is developing an off-speed pitch to your normal demeanor that allows you to have, it's unbelievable how much comfort I have in, I'm content. While still hungrier than anything I've ever even seen. That's fucking balance. I realized that I never even knew your middle name. I realized that summer's over. It was my time to go away. Binders of books. I used to sit in front of my TV the and NFL? watch the draft and NFL draft. And I used to Who'd you like growing up? You did. My dream was to be a general manager of the New York Jets. My dream was to be the first GM since 69 to, to win a Super Bowl for the Jets. Hello. Hello, gang. How are you? How are things? I used to sell lemonade, as you guys probably know, and one time a guy in a bike, I will never forget this story, stops in, has like a classic old school 1980s water bottle, so just a plastic water bottle, and he goes, fill this up and I'll give you $10, and it was probably $1.25 worth of lemonade if you measured it. I don't think he even got to the, fill this up and I'll give you, I think he said, by the time he was done with up, I had it fully filled up, and that $10, to this day, I've never had a transaction, million, multi-million dollar transactions, never felt like that, to this day. I so I get that $34 day, I have one. It's a $10 fill up, and it feels better than anything I've ever done in my life, professionally. And so how's it going right now with culture? It's fine, it's fine. I feel fine with it, and I feel a couple locations I can manage. It's just, it gets to a point where I feel like I'm just not gonna be there that often. Okay, so that's the big punchline. Like, you feel from afar that, that you, like, are int- intrigued by how much I care about that and talk about that and it seems like right to you? Yeah, and I've, I've seen competitors fall and they've had that problem. Got it. All right, so look, here's a couple core things. Number one, you can't control anything at scale. The way you control it is at a macro. So here's what I mean by that. Couple things that I think will stand out. Number one, you have to fire people that undermine the culture that you want regardless of what they do. If you end up having 11 locations and the regional manager, because that's the way you decided to structure it, she or he has five stores under their watch and their stores are doing the best financially, but you know that she's either changed or it's been exposed that he can't manage the people anymore you have to fire that person. The biggest reason people lose on culture is they value the money the person brings to the table over the undermining that that person's creating to culture. It's as simple as that. I think the number one way to make culture great is to use a parenting analogy. Parents that really dominate do the following. There's a thing, Ricky's going to a new high school, we have to pick the high school. Sally wants to go to sleepaway camp, which one? We don't like Sally's new boyfriend, Rick. Like all that shit, right? What great parents do is they go into the bedroom, fucking duke it the fuck out, 
and then walk out of that room united front and there's no veering from the narrative. I have did a great job with that at Wine Library. I did a good job with it at Vayner and then I did a bad job of it. What I never told Steve or the people of his level and higher was no friction amongst us 50 and that's why there's a lot to fix for Vayner in my opinion because every single leader here blindly needs to support every other leader and then hash it out and then use me as the Supreme Court because they may not be able to get to a resolution but then they can come to me and I make decisions and then they have to blindly support that or they can leave if they hate my decision. I'm working on everything with starting the music right now but I'm, and I'm recording things but I don't feel like they're as good as they're gonna be six months from now when I'm really ready to put it out. But I still wanna start, I still would like this. I would put it out. Put it out anyway. I would put it out anyway, but I would put it out anyway under that pretext. So for example, you gotta be smart with strategy. Maybe you call it alpha. Yeah. Alpha music colon. And then you just put the title of the song. And people are like, what the fuck is alpha music? Like you literally just, like we literally just made it up. <laughs> it's alpha music. It's now that we're in the world of journey, of documenting the journey, and I know my music is gonna get substantially better. This is music I'm making. I'd like you to hear it. I want to document my journey, but I'd like to call it alpha music because it's not ready for prime time. Mm. Who says you can't? Mm. I don't know. I like this one. I'm glad. That, <laughs> by the way, this is why I document because I feel like that's just a really, like, I feel like that's what I would do if I was doing it, right? You guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> One minute. That's all we need. Good. Hey, I'm Joe Harris. My name is Juan Alcivar. My name is Zeno Burnett. My name is Daniel Fessler. I assume you need capital, right? To start this. What's in it for me is the question. You're in a branding speed game. You have to build a brand. The end. Let me say a he, he heard me, he understood, and let's go. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to go do some Uber, earn some money, and let's just rock it right now. Awesome. Let's go. It went, went better than I could have expected. We're ready to, we're ready to, you know, go forward. He's always providing a wealth of knowledge and, and giving us all these little tidbits of advice. Now, one thing that I love about Gary Vee is that he keeps it real, and he offers real solutions that you can apply to your business immediately. Making a better video that doesn't have it in the three seconds versus a worse video that does have it in three seconds will most likely sell more cups of coffee or wine, I think. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't. There's, there's a lot of different variables of play. I, I think Go ahead, I mean, like, this is the uh, conversation yeah, I want to have. Two, a you know what I mean? Yeah. Why don't we more watermark the logo of every brand in every video? Why don't we put a ticker at the bottom? Why don't we invent the ticker? for videos on Facebook the way ESPN or CNBC or whoever the fuck invent, someday some gal or guy sat in a room like this and said, let's make a fucking ticker. There was no tickers in 1972. Andy, I want to create, you know how ESPN has a ticker? Yes. I want every video that I make for the next six months to have a ticker. Socials, everything? Uh, I don't know. I now only put out videos with tickers. Cool. Let everybody start designing. That is my new thing. I'm now the ticker guy. Respect. Sure. Sure. Ready? Yep. Let's go. Take care, guys.